welcome to Unhacked. I am Brian Graff, my Senior Vice President of Abaco. Uh, here to take you every Thursday, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, to take you through a cyber topic of the week. We cover the what, the when, the where, and the why for the most recent cyber attacks and give you lessons learned to help you prevent the attack from happening to you. Now, today we're going to go through something a little bit different. Uh, we're not going to go through an actual attack. Instead, I want to talk about something called the MITRE attack framework. Uh, we talk a lot about compliance frameworks here at Abacode, uh, things like SOC 1, SOC 2, uh, ISO 27001. Uh, these are compliance standards and frameworks that companies follow. It's basically a list of tasks that you follow to implement security mechanisms to help prevent uh, attacks on your systems and data. So these are all written from the perspective of the, of the executives, which makes sense because your uh, your executives of your organization are going to be responsible for your security program. So they are the ones that are, are responsible for implementing it, for assessing the risks, and assigning tasks to personnel to, uh, to implement the security mechanisms and then monitor those on an ongoing basis to ensure that they're working properly. So because they're written from the executive level, from a non-technical level, they're usually very vague in terms of what you need to implement uh, uh, from, on a system level to ensure that these attacks aren't happening to you. And also, they're also vague because they have to apply to several different types of organizations, uh, cloud-based organizations, on-prem organizations. Uh, they have to be very vague so that they can, uh, they can be applied uh, universally. However, there is one framework, and that's the MITRE attack framework, that is written from basically the uh, point of view of the attacker. Um, so it's, it's basically a list of uh, techniques, tactics, and procedures that a hacker will use to exfiltrate your data and perform a ransomware attack. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen uh, the MITRE attack framework, it, it looks similar to a regular compliance standard on the outset. Uh, there's a framework, there's uh, different domains. But instead of domains like access control, configuration management, risk management, the domains are the, uh, the techniques that the attackers use to, to access your network and, and try to steal your data. So MITRE is a federally funded uh, organization. Um, they uh, they uh, provide this framework free of charge. And uh, it's a great tool for security engineers and, uh, and network administrators and executives too. Uh, to uh, to bolster their current compliance standard. Uh, it, most compliance standards, like I said, are, are top down. Uh, they start off with a risk assessment. Um, you you assess risks, so you're, they're not even giving you uh, the types of attacks you need to defend against. They leave that up to the executives to to identify those types of attacks and then uh, mitigate those risks. Where MITRE is bottom up. Um, it starts with exactly what the hackers will do to access your systems. Um, so uh, for a normal compliance standard, you aren't gonna see something like ransomware, you're not gonna see account takeover. Uh, they're never gonna get to that uh, granular of a level, whereas uh, MITRE will start off with that level. So when we talk about a ransomware attack, that's not just a one thing that happens or a, an a executable that, um, that you download uh, unintentionally and you uh, set it off and you're done. There's actually several steps that the hackers have to take in order to get to your to your data and get to your uh, your admin privileges so that they can take over your network and lock it down and make you pay a ransom to get your data back and, and, and service back. So what, like I said, what the MITRE does is it, it breaks up your, uh, your procedures based on stopping those individual uh, techniques that the hackers use. So again, we talk about ransomware. There's something, there's initial access. So how does the hacker get to your workstation or get to your network? Um, there's, there's different techniques that they use. MITRE will outline those techniques and then tell you very technical things that you need to do uh, to prevent those attacks from happening. There's execution. So how does the hacker get their malware to actually run on a workstation or a server? How do you prevent that? And it goes all the way down the list from persistence, privilege, privilege escalation. So persistence is if I get on, I want to, if I'm a hacker and I want to get onto your network, 
I want to make sure I didn't waste my time. I want to set up a back door, uh, make sure I um, create um, uh, maybe backups or or uh, alternate access methods and make sure that uh, if someone does detect that I'm on a workstation or on a server and they delete my malware, I can get back in and, and continue my attack. Privilege es escalation. Uh, normally, we say all the time, the way that hackers are going to get in or via email on a workstation. So if it's just... Uh, a standard employee, they're not usually going to have access to privileged commands on, on a production network. So just getting into a workstation doesn't do a whole lot for me. I need to make sure I get to the network administrator level, the server administrator level, so I can change things on the network level and make sure that not only can I do whatever I want, but that uh, I'm not detected. Defense evasion, credential access, uh, all the way down to exfiltration and command and control. So basically now I've taken over your network, I have stolen the data, uh, and nowadays what, what hackers do is they, uh, they're they gonna sell it back to you. So they will uh, they let you know, hey, I've, I've, uh, I've got your data, your system is locked down, I'm sure there's a, uh, a notification on your screen, you can't access anything, and if you don't pay a ransom within this date, I will publish your data to the internet. So that's the steps that a hacker takes in order to execute an attack. And MITRE gives you very specific steps as to how you detect um, and then how you test yourself so that you can um, perform what's called red teaming exercises with, where someone poses as a hacker and tries to get into your system and you can test out your defenses uh, before you know, it happens in real time. So MITRE is written, again, it's very technical. Uh, it's written in three stages, level one to level three. So if you're just starting off in uh, you don't know a lot about SIM and you've never been involved in a penetration test. Um, it gives you a base level uh, just to start doing your research and start implementing uh, simple steps that you can take to start defending against these types of attacks. Um, the first thing that MITRE tells you to do is enable logging. Um, so there's different types of logs that you have to, uh, have to enable because in order to detect an attack, you, you have to know what's going on in your system. So you have to know um, things like process and command, command line monitoring, uh, file and registry monitoring. These are from, like from a Windows machine, this will be a syslog. Um, authentication logs, you have to know who's doing what in your system, what at daily activity, normal activity is happening, and from a registry level, what things are being changed. You know, during, during a normal course of business operations, you may change uh, certain registry keys, but that's not something that should happen every day. So you need to detect when something major is, a major configuration has changed on, on one of your servers. Uh, authentication logs, like I talked talk about, and then uh, packet capture. So traffic in and out of your network. Are you able to determine where, uh, where traffic is coming from? If it's got malicious uh, packages inside of it, you have to have this information before MITRE can even work. Beyond that, uh, you have to have a SIM installed. So you, even the smallest organizations, are going to have uh, several different sources that are creating logs. If you're not aggregating those in a central repository and you're not um, uh, correlating the events and making sure that something happened on a firewall, then on a server, or then on a workstation, be able to trace an event from disparate uh, devices, then there's no way you're going to be able to detect any of these attacks are occurring. Be also, beyond that, you have to uh, you have to perform red teaming exercises. You have to be able to implement these technical uh, uh, processes. So, even at a level one, you're going to need to know. Um, you're going to have to have a base level knowledge of IT and security. Uh, so, this is a great framework for you to start really getting uh, getting to know how hackers do what they do, and that's your first step towards preventing these things from happening. Um, MITRE isn't the end-all be-all. Uh, it's very specific and technical focus. So it doesn't talk about doing a risk assessment. It doesn't talk about the process level controls that you need to do outside of, of, these, uh, of these very technical steps. So uh, from a compliance standard, you're still gonna wanna perform a risk assessment. Uh, you're still gonna wanna implement those controls according to your industry accepted standards. So if you are uh, in, in the government space, something like a CMMC, or in this state, 171. Uh, if you're doing a lot of international and EU uh, business, uh, ISO 27001 is still a good compliance standard to apply. But 
on your technical level, on your sysadmin and your network level, MITRE is a great tool and it's free to use uh, to to gain this knowledge and, and start thinking like a hacker because that's really the only way that you are on a technical level going to be able to stop these attacks. So that's all we have today for um, for Unhacked. Uh, if you want to know more about the MITRE attack framework, uh, we've had we have the link below, and you can always contact us uh, here at Abacode. We use the MITRE attack framework to apply our SIM rules and do our red teaming, vulnerability assessments, and penetration tests. So it's not just something we talk about. It's basically what we do. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, you can contact me. You can go to our website. And uh, if you have any other questions, please let us know. If you like this information, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week.